What's up guys and welcome back to the AV Club. You just do me a favor and punch that subscribe button and then we're gonna get right into it. Long ago, in a faraway land, one did not have motors or brakes on their boards yet. You had three options in which to slow down. The front or, or back slide, the tail slide, and the front. Guys, that was just a really quick um, little intro on kind of what a foot brake looks like. And I'm gonna kind of go over it really quick because a lot of people have also asked, I mean, we have motorized skateboards now, but the rise of e-boards, you cannot always count on the motors to be there. If they crap out on you, or there's a disconnect from the Bluetooth of your remote to your board, uh, you could be in a free uh, fall on your board, basically going down a hill and not be able to break. If you don't know one of those three breaks in the first uh, part of the video, that's probably not the best. First off, we have long boards, so you can't really pop them up and get razor tail, so that's kind of out of the question, unless you have a tail on your board. Uh, also, we have motors on the backs now, so that's kind of out of the question because you'll start scratching up your motors. The other thing is that when I first started um, electric skateboarding was power slides, which is a front or a back slide. Now, the problem with those, when you have a motor, you're pushing the board in a 90 degree direction from where it's normally going and the force going onto the motors starts to eat through your belts and if you have hub motors it may even mess up the hubs too and it just eats through the wheels so that's not the best option so the only option when it comes to longboarding and especially electric longboarding is the foot brake and it's one of those um, safety precautions I'd recommend that every single person that e-skates learn how to do it's pretty, yeah, I wouldn't say it's simple, but you have to kind of get your bearings first. The main thing is you need to dorsiflex your foot when you first do it. So you almost want to point your toes up and keep your heel down. And then you're going to slightly rock into it where you're going to let more of your foot, or basically the contact patch, hit the ground while you drag it along the ground. Now the main point is to put about 80% to 85% of your weight on your dominant leg on the board because if you step too hard on the ground the ground is going to catch you and you're just going to fall and you're going to eat it so you want to rock kind of into it if you do it too fast your foot will start to stutter if you do it too far away from your center of mass if you step out too far to the side laterally you will actually do the splits and that could also be problem some you need to keep your legs very close together so they stay tight and then also let that foot drag behind you and it's going to cause you and your board to slow down and because our boards are heavier that takes even more time to learn and it takes even more pressure and more stability so you're basically doing a slight negative lunge and then you are stabilizing on the ground while you're moving I would practice this on flat land for months and then start going to small, small hills and practicing it. And then if you uh, think you got it down finally, start picking up speed and going down bigger hills and then, you know, do it on your e-board and then just not use your brakes and just try to use your foot and see how it goes. Good luck guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to obviously leave them in the comment section. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Talk to you guys soon.